Yep. Cool. Cool. Thanks, Pablo. So, I mean, I, I think in, in terms of introduction, pretty much everything is said. So I'm Damien. Um, I've been working with Bubble um, on and off as a hobby since about 2016. So in the early days when Bubble like looked quite the same, but had very different features. So it was uh, a lot of, you know, it was a bit of wild, wild west of no code back in the day. I guess it's this, but uh, the, the, the product really has evolved and it's been really cool to see it uh, coming out all, all that way. Um, I've launched about um, 10 products uh, built with Bubble, two of them also in the app store being mobile apps, um, others being mostly kind of saas or marketplace products. Uh, some of them as a hobby, some of them I did for projects that work back in the day. So I, I've built a lot. Um, and I think with, you know, building a lot, things just get easier over time. Bubble has a certain learning curve, but uh, I think for me, it was definitely worth staying with it. Uh, it's a cool product, cool community. And yeah, I'm, I'm happy to do this walkthrough today. Is there, you know, any questions from the start or maybe, you know, um, you know any particular things you want to focus yeah, on? I, I would like to maybe ask uh, guys, why are you, why are you main questions or, or doubts around bubble or maybe why are the things that you've been struggling the most with with learning the tool uh, so maybe Damon can emphasize those points as he goes through the workshop yeah great so whenever yeah just shoot what you got what you got obviously un unmute yourself yeah this much oh Cool. So not not biases, uh, not prior experience. So yeah, fresh fresh meat. Okay, cool. Okay, so I'll I'll, I'll really go back. So I assume I, I just start with the very very basics of Bubble. Um, and I'm going to show you what we're going to go through today, what we're building, and then we'll just start building. Um, I guess we'll get the most the core part of the functionality we get done for sure. Um, let's see how far we get with the you know fancy uh, things. Yeah that make it a bit nicer. Um, just going to share my screen if that's all right. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Awesome. Cool. So I just need to get rid of. So what we're going to build today is a very simple task. So I just need to get rid of this Zoom uh, panel. I, it is, I think you can't see it, but uh, it's actually in the way. I had video. No, that was the wrong one. I think we can't see it. I, I can't see I can only see No, it. but I can't click my tabs. Ah, yeah, That's yeah. That's the thing. Okay, I was just going to do it like that. Um, Okay, cool. So what we're gonna build is a very simple task list. Um, it has lists. So there's a simple task list. I can add another one. I just call it, uh, let's say, list two. And then we can add tasks to list two. So I'm just gonna call it task one, whatever. Okay, we have a story about that. That's my password manager doesn't like the page right now. Um, anyway, we have different lists. Then there's tasks associated to a list. I can mark a task as done. It goes down here. I can mark it as I'm done. It goes up, back up. You also see I'm currently uh, logged in. I can also log out. And then I'm basically not able to do anything back here. Then I can go back to log in. Um, And yeah, whatever. Uh, <laughs> can't remember my password. I'm just gonna add something here. Okay, yeah, that's basically it. So I'm gonna just start by go, going to Bubble. I'm gonna open a blank application. Just gonna um, show you the basic functions in Bubble, and then we're gonna start building. So if you're in Bubble, and I hope you all have an account by now. By the way, Pablo. Are we doing this as a build along? So I go slow, or is it more like I'm just going through and then everybody can watch the recording? I'm yes. So, who from you have created an account and have it uh, 
like handy. Yeah, so we have Krush. And yeah, I think he is the only one who creates an account. So you can do it, I think, on the moderate pace. And if someone, you know, comes with a question, just drop it in the chat and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll let you know, Damien, to make a post and, and well, explain that. Okay, yeah, it's good if you have an eye on the chat because I, I won't be looking at it. Yeah. Okay, so in Bubble, just open a new app. Um, I'm just gonna call this I call it something random. Um, I'm not gonna start from a template and then these four fields is just for statistics. So you can basically select whatever you want. So I'm just gonna, this is SaaS product. This is optional, it's external and I'm just playing around. I'm gonna create the app. Sometimes this takes a while. And then the first thing is we see this new application assistant is popping up. Um, this can help us setting up, you know, some of the metadata for application. It also has this kind of example page. Uh, we don't want any of this right now. So we're just gonna go start with the blank page and then close our assistant. So you have like a blank page that we can build on. And before I go into the different sections of Bubble app, um, I think what's mentioning what's worth, what's worth mentioning is if you look at Bubble and compare it to things like, for example, software. Um, can you give me a show of hands who knows software or has worked with software before? Okay, there, there's a few hands. So the main difference is software and a lot of similar tools that work with blocks. So you say, okay, I want to have kind of a hero section or I want to have an FAQ section or I want to have a call to action. And then you have a block. Bubble works very differently. In Bubble, you basically really have to put individual elements on a canvas and then kind of move them around. So it's really like programming in a sense that it's all individual elements. You can also have, you know, a picture here, but it's really individual elements and all of the logic and how these elements work together. Um, is something that you need to keep in mind yourself. Um, cool. So what do we have here? I'm just going to go through this very quickly and then we start working with different things. So the design panel, you just saw what this is. This is basically where we design the front end, um, the UI, um, user interface and application. You can just put things here. I'm going to talk more about this in a second. Uh, I'm just going to jump to data. This is where we have the database of our app. So right now you see, for example, there's a data type user. It has a few data fields like email and it was created and so on. So here we define our data. We have styles. Um, this is basically an easier way to style individual elements in the front end. Let's just not worry about this for now. Um, I'll, I'll show you how it works once we go through it. There's plugins. This is the a section where you can sell third-party plugins. So not necessarily developed by Bubble, but people like uh, me, for example, who um, develop plugins and you can install them. These are super important if you want to do things like payments or analytics and so on. Um, I don't think we'll use any today. Then we have settings. Here you can manage uh, your subscription. There's a few things with regards to privacy and so on. What I forgot is in the data tab, there's also privacy rules. These are super important. We'll look at this as well once we build our app and you can also see the current data that is in the app. Okay, um, that's a very brief overview. Um, don't get overwhelmed. Uh, we'll just use all of these by, by building the app. So the first thing that we wanna do is go back to design and actually here you see responsive, this responsive tab. This helps you to look at your app in different sizes. Um, Bubble used to be doing um, kind of using absolute positioning. So you move things to the page and you can move them around and they are where you actually put them. Bubble has recently uh, put a major update out of the responsive design engine. And I'm gonna work with this now. I don't recommend you to learn the old one. The new is much more powerful and it's here to stay. So let's just upgrade this. You don't need to. Just, you can just uncheck all of this and then upgrade the page. 
Yeah, just a note on that. Uh, what, what Damien says is very important because with the new responsive engine, you actually use less elements to build your apps so they load faster and you will end having a better user experience for, for your users, basically. And it's also like at least 10 times quicker in building things, especially when you have a complex page and you need to move things around. It's really a lot, lot better. It has a bit of a higher learning curve, maybe at least in the very beginning, but it's actually much easier to work with. So let's, whatever you read, don't use the old one. Um, good. So once this is upgraded, the first thing that actually I want to do is work with our data. So I'm just gonna go back to the app. We said we have task lists and we have tasks. Very simple data structure. So how it works in Bubble is you can connect data so that you know a task belongs to a list and so on. If you go to data types, we can just define a new data type. And I'll just define the data types quickly and then I'm gonna link them. So one data type is a task. And then the other data type that I need is a task list. And then let's stay with the task list for a second. What do I need? A task list basically needs a name. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on task list here and then say, create new field. I'm just gonna call it name. And the field type here that I need is a text. And the same goes for, if I go to task, the same goes for task. The task needs a name. This will also be a text. The task also needs something to know whether it's done or not. So this is done, right now it's not done. It's just yes or no. So I could take field and call it uh, is done. It's probably not the best uh, way to name something with a question mark, but you know, in bubble it's fine. Um, field type is a yes or no. We can also set a default, which is basically what is assigned to the task when it's created. So the default is no. If I create a new task, it's not done. And then let's find a way to link these. And there's two ways, so one is a bit better um, but it really depends on use case. I'm gonna show you both. So one is in the task list, you can create a new field and you could say um, related tasks. And then the field type, you can also select other data types you've created. So you could say, okay, created tasks is tasks, is a task and then it's a list of tasks. And then you can basically use this to map tasks into this list. Um, Search-wise, this is not the best way to do it. Um, it doesn't really matter as long as your product isn't working at a large scale. But the bit, the better way would be if you go to tasks and then you just say, um, what's the parent list? And the field type here is a task list. Okay, so my task here, sample task one, knows its parent is sample task list. And if I'm adding a new list, I'm creating a list in here. There's currently no tasks if I'm creating. So just by the way, to be sure for people that just joined, this is not the, the current version of the build. It's just an example of what we're going to build. So if I define a new task, I'm going to call this task one. I'm going to edit. While I create the task, I'm telling it that your parent list is this ASDF one. So it always knows where it, the task knows to what list it belongs, not the other way around. Does it make sense for everyone? Yeah, I think we're, we're good. If anyone has questions, feel free to, to drop them on the chat, please. Okay, good. That's fine. That's all of the data that we need currently, at least. Um, workflows um, we will use later. Let's go ahead and define our user interface. So very basic, what we need is kind of two columns. One is a column where we display our task lists and one is a column where we display our tasks. It's kind of the first thing that we need to do. 
if I'm using Bubble's new responsive editor, it doesn't work that I just move things around like in the old version that I just showed you. If I put something here, oh, actually, so every element now that it's on the page and also the index, the page itself has a layout type that's currently on fixed. With fixed, I can just move things around as in the old um, editor. You don't want to use this actually, um, but what you want to use is something like aligned to parent row or column. And just, I'm going to go through this very, very quickly. Aligned to parent is basically what it means. I'm just telling the child element how it aligns to its parents. So it's top left, it's top right, could be bottom, could be top middle and so on. There are use cases for this, they're not very common. If I go back and select my page here, by the way, elements tree, always good to open this up, selecting the page. Usually we'll use either a column or a row. Column goes from top to bottom, row goes from left to right. So if I'm gonna tell this is a row, if I have multiple of these LS, they're just gonna line up left to right. I'm again gonna select my page. I'm gonna tell it's a column. It goes top to bottom. As simple as that. And then there's a few options where I can you know, say, okay, I want this to be on the left or I want this to be in the middle and so on. So, If I'm gonna go back to what we're building, I need a row because this is left, this is right. So something that aligns from left to right is a row. And I'm gonna just add a group here, empty and another group. I'm gonna select the parent, tell it it's a row. And you see, I have my two rows here. I'm just gonna give them some colors real quick. So we can just remove the style that is given to them by default. I'm just gonna give this one color. Also remove the style here. Give this another color. And then let's talk about sizing because I want this to have a certain size and this to take up more size. Um, there's a lot of way um, how you can actually do this. And usually um, it's hard to just get it right on the first try so what people mostly do is just play around with it so first thing these groups that we just added they're columns because they have content that goes from top to bottom so i'm gonna select this put it in column and select this put it in column and now depending on the container layout we have some different sizing options if i go to my group a that's currently a fixed width of 348 pixels and this one has currently also the same fixed width. Let's see if we actually want that. It's fine for the left one, but the right one should take all the rest of the space. So let's leave this to make it 320. And here we can just remove the fixed width and then it will automatically take up the rest of the page. This is basically the main layout that we have here um, to get it in the same fashion, I can just take this, go to appearance and you know, give it a bit of a different color. By the way, I will not pay a lot of attention to, to design today. Um, making things look nice usually takes a lot of time. I don't think we have to. Okay, making this slightly, oh, whatever, great. Okay, that's the basic layout. And the next thing that we want to do is just um, yeah, let's let's add a few elements first. So we need some text here. This is called uh, task lists. And actually, here come here we can use the styles. So styles, that's the things on the left here. It's just predefined styles that you can apply to elements. And right now, since we're using an empty template, it's just by done by bubbles. So I'm just gonna you know, use this heading. That's not good. Maybe heading too dark. What about heading one? Okay, we can use this. And um, if we go to layout, because this is currently not looking good, we don't want this to have a fixed width. Um, we can say, okay, let's make this fit to content. We want to give this some margin. Let's say I'm gonna give this 20 from the top, uh, 20 from the left. 
I just can I can can just copy this, go to my round one. Now let's call this. So you know, we don't like the H1. Um, let's just make this H2s. And also in terms of element height, we see that we're currently using a bit more space in the text. We can just go back to layout element height. You see there's a minimum height. We can just get rid of this. I mean, it doesn't really matter too much for now, but it's always good to... Um, also here we have a minimum width. We don't need that. Oh, it's good to see things clean. Good. Okay. Next thing, let's start by displaying our task lists. The way we display data in Bubble, if it's a list, is done by something called a repeating group. So I'm just going to click this, click in the group where I want to have it. Now it's here. And a repeating group basically searches for data and then displays individual entries of the list that it finds in your database. So the type of content that we want to display is task lists and the data source, we can do a search. Again, the type is task list. We don't gonna add any constraint now, we can add this later. So right now we search for task lists, we're just gonna find all the task lists that are in our app. Um, quickly on layout, let's also give this some margin let's go again with 20 from the top and 20 from the left um and let's take care about the layout later we want so that's the list in our list we want to just put the task names so we can just select some text click into this repeating group and here where we have some text we can add some dynamic data and just say the text should be current cells task list, task name. Okay, let's actually do some layouting. This is currently fixed. I um, actually want this to be a row. I want this to be aligned to the middle. There shouldn't be a minimum height. Let's give this some margin on the right. This shouldn't fixed with also no minimum width. Um, there's no minimum height. What else? Amen. Can I can I ask yeah. you a question? Uh, when yes, you when you set up a repeating group, uh, do you usually use once one single row? If or or do you specify like the number of 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 records that you want to display from the from the beginning, because I, I think I usually it really, yeah usually one that there is cases where it makes sense to have more, especially with the old editor, it makes sense sometimes, but usually it's one. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So yeah, coming to that, this, here we said set, set a fixed number of rows. We put this to one columns as well one. Um, and then what we need to do is set a minimum height for our row. I'm actually not sure where this was done. Um, mm -hmm. No, it doesn't matter. We can also just, by the way, that's also important. We can always click an element and say reveal. So we see where it is here. We can select the text and we can also give this some margin top, let's say 10 and 10 on the bottom. So we automatically have some space. Um, in terms of size, this is going to be fixed width of 200. We don't need that. Good, okay. Let's actually add some data. So if I go to data, then app data, I can view my data, but I also can add a new entry. Uh, that's tasks. I want to go to task lists. I'm going to add an entry. Let's call it uh, task list one. I'm going to create that. 
and I'm adding task list two. And let's preview. I'm just gonna, yeah. Here's the preview button. It's basically loads our page. You can see that it hopefully um, works. Okay, we see now we have task list one. So I messed something up here. Yeah, so actually that's the thing. Um, setting fixed number of rows is not necessary. We can uncheck this and it's one by default to minimum height. Let's say I want to have this 50 pixels minimum height. Then I can in theory go back to my text and remove this, but let's leave it for now. Again, let's click on preview. This reloads our page. Okay, now we see we have task list one, task list two. This is being displayed. Um, some cosmetics, if we go to repeating group appearance, um, let's remove this style because currently we have this separator here and read them like that. And just separator right now it's solid. You just put this to none and then this should look better. Okay, cool. Let's do the same for our tasks. Um, we can actually just copy this and select group B. I'm actually also gonna name these groups. It's always super important if you have more complex app. So group A is my group, um, I'm just gonna call this left. And then here group B is my group, right. Copy my repeating group here. And then I select my group right here. I'm just gonna paste this and then we see that we have it here. What can change, of course, now we're gonna search for tasks. Let's change our search. Okay, let's add some tasks in our test data. I'm gonna select this. I'm gonna have a new entry. Um, one, the parent list. I want to link a parent list currently, usually. So if, let me just show you something. If I go to my tasks, the task lists, all elements, data elements, Bubble calls these things, and Bubble have this unique ID, which is just a unique identifier for all the things in your database. Which is good because it's unique, but you know you can't. It's not really human uh, readable. So if we're linking things, I'm just going to go ahead and create my task one again. The parent list currently is linked to this task list by the unique ID. As I said, that's not readable, so we can just change this to name. It's still linked by the ID, but we can um, read it now. So I'm going to link this to task list one. Again, this is task one, don't know where it disappeared. It's done now. Okay, we have our first task here. I'm just gonna go ahead, and task two. This is also in task list one. It's done, no. And then I'm actually gonna add a third task, which is linked to task list two. And by the way, I'm just, if I'm clicking in here, nothing's coming. I'm just gonna start typing and then we get the proposed entry. So uh, by the way, is this done? Also no. Good. Um, I'm gonna preview this now. We see, we see all our tasks and right now we also can click anywhere. Um, Next thing you need to do is uh, find a way that we can say, if I click here, I want to only see tasks that are related to task list one. And if I click here, I only want to have tasks related to task list two. Here is where um, we can set data sources for our page. So for example, I can do this on a page level, but I also can do this on a um, level of individual element. Um, and it's called type of content. So if I select my page index, there's a type of content, which is basically just saying the page, okay, you know, 
you just save a type of data. You, there's also something called states or custom states that do the same, but that's the easiest thing to do right now. So our type of data that the page has is task list. And let's look at the workflows for the first time. So if I click on this text, I can say, if it's clicked, do something, start edit the workflow. So if I click on it, it opens the workflow. On when this text is clicked, what I wanna do is display data in a group. And I wanna display it in index and the data I wanna display is myself. So current self's task list. Ah, wait. That doesn't wanna work. What's the issue here? Can I can I ask uh, Damien why would you yeah. what why are you because you're linking the data type of the full page uh, to to be a task task list task list right mm -hmm. yeah so yeah why or why would you choose that from uh, for for instance using uh, a custom say, as you mentioned, or for instance, just uh, linking it to a group, a container in particular. Yeah, it's just because it's on the highest level. Um, it's not the best way, like I was proposing it. So using a custom state or linking it on a group level is actually cleaner because the thing, um, the page type of content is actually used in the URL. So if the page has a type of content, I can send the URL, you know, my mm. page slash something. And then if I load this something, this data element is being displayed in the page automatically. So there's a, I'm a kind of, I was abusing it. So, okay, let's let's go with your way. Let's select our group left. No, 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 um, no, it's, the, it's, give, the more, I, no, it's, it's actually better anyway. Yeah. It's actually, okay, let's just use our group left. Uh, let's give this a type of data uh, task list the source we don't need. Okay, let's go back to our text. I want to display data if it's clicked. And in our group left, I want to display current sales task list. Okay, it's blue, no error. So what's happening, if I click here, the list that is being displayed is being saved as a variable basically in this group. So states or data types of content is basically what in Usually, no one program will be variables. It's just kind of a more visual way to, to say things. Um, okay, let's adjust our search here because right now I'm just searching for tasks. I'm gonna add a constraint. And what I want to say is basically the tasks that I'm looking for, their parent list is the list that is currently displayed in our group on the left. So, group left is task lists. If we go to preview this. Okay, we see there's no tasks being displayed because currently there's no list selected. If I'm clicking on task list one, I tasks one and two. If I'm clicking on task list two, I see task two. Okay, there's probably an error in my data. Yeah, I actually call this task two. This should be disk three. Okay. So this works. Does that make sense um, for everyone? Yeah, I think I think that that's great. I, I, okay, cool. Um, let's see how we can mark tasks as done for now. I'm just gonna add an icon here to my tasks. Um, <laughs> so by what I wanted to do is, is to put it in my repeating group. So, but I want to have it smaller on the left. So let's go to layout. We can move things around by using this make first previous and so on panel. So I'm going to put it make first. Then it's here on the left of the text. I'm gonna make this 20 by 
let's say 30 by 30 pixels. We're also gonna align this to the vertical center. And then I'm gonna give this some margin on the right. Oh, actually, I'm not going, I'm gonna give the text some margin on the left. Um, want this to be a empty checkbox. Let's just use this for now. No. Let's use this for now. Okay, cool. So I also can attach a workflow to this. What I want to do is if this is clicked, I want to change some data. So I can say, make changes to a thing. Again, thing is how bubble um, relates or names data entries. The thing that I want to change is the task that is linked to the current cell. And what I want to change is the, is it done to, yes, it's done. Okay, let's go ahead. I'm going to select task list one. If I click here, it's going to be marked as done, but you won't see any changes. So I click here. Nothing changes because we haven't you know, told our app that something should change if a task is done or not. But if I go to my data tab and I refresh my data, we see the task is done. Yes. So let's make sure that we also you know, see a visual result if we mark a task is done. This is where conditionals come into the game. So we have this um, icon here. The first conditional that we could use is say, when current cells task is done. So is done also already results to yes. If you're unsure, just say is yes. This makes it a bit clearer. You could also say is no or is yes. Then we wanna have a different icon. So this icon should be uh, Use this. Let's go ahead and reload this. So we select task list one. Now we can't mark it undone because you know we just said if you click it, mark it as done. So we also need a way to mark it undone. Let's go back to our workflow. And we say, you know, if this icon is clicked mark it as done but we only want to do this if current cells task is done is no so if it's clicked and the current cell task is not marked as yes so it's done is no we're gonna mark this done as yes we can just copy this now and paste it and say if the current cells task is done is yes and it's being clicked, we're gonna mark it as it's done, no. So exactly doing the opposite. There's a bit more elegant ways how to do this, but let's just stick with this for now. So right now I can play around with it, mark it done, undone. Um, let's go ahead and just copy this whole list. And I'm just gonna also copy this text, so this is, I'm just gonna call this open tasks. Just gonna copy it again, go to layout, move it down. So I'm just gonna say next and gonna call this done tasks. And let's use some more um, conditions in our search. So currently we're searching for tasks. In the list above, I wanna search for tasks where that is done is no okay and in my list below here i want to search for tasks where that is done is yes and by the way we made a mistake because if i just copy the an element like i just did like using control control v it, it um, copies the element but it doesn't copy the workflow so i'm just going to yeah. delete this quickly then I'm gonna right click here and say, copy with workflows. And then I'm gonna click in here and say, paste with workflows. Then again, 
Let's move this down, adjust our search. And if I, for example, now click on this icon here, go to start edit workflow, we see that workflows are there already because we copied them from above. So let's see if this works. Okay, we select our task list one. We see task one, which is done, is done here. I can mark it up and done. Mm. Same if I go for task list two. Okay, so that's the basic function of, uh, of our app. Let's actually make sure that right now, if we load the page, that something is being displayed because if I just load the page now, you know, no, nothing is selected. So I have kind of a weird thing going on on the right here. I can add another workflow. If I go to workflows, just add a new one, say if page is loaded. And then, by the way, you can also copy workflows. So I'm just gonna copy this workflow display data. So when page is loaded, I want to display some data in my group left. And um, we don't have a parent group right now anymore because you know we just load this unreal to any visual element. But I'm gonna search for a task list. Um, we could say, and we're gonna come to that in a second. I want the task list to be created by equal to the current user. Oh no, actually, you know what? Let's not do this now. I'll just give you a brief outlook on that later because I see we're running out of time. So I'm gonna search for a task list and then just select the first item for yeah. now. And if I reload the page, you know, something is selected. Okay. Um, briefly on, I'm just going to speed up a bit. So briefly right now, we're just selecting tasks. So if, you know, um, I'm going to send you this link, you're going to see exactly the same. It's not mapped to a specific user. There's a few things that we need to do. If you want to map it to a specific user, the first thing is we need to give people a way to log in and log out. Um, in bubble, and there's a few kind of predefined elements. These are also just consisting of individual things, but you know, Bubble just opens their app with them. So we just a login pop-up. I'm just gonna put this here on my page. Um, this is still not really working well with the new responsive engine, but let's see if we can do something about it. Uh, pop-ups pop behave a little bit different, right? With the new responsive, like the settings are a bit tricky to, to get it work the way you want it, I found. Yeah, yeah. So for now, I'm always working with fixed width for pop-ups. Yeah. yeah, okay. So we have a way to log in, log out now. What we want to do is, if the page is loaded, actually, let's get rid of displaying this data, we want to we want to show an element and the one thing you want to show is the pop-up that we just added if i go back to my pop-up i don't want the user to be able to close it by pressing escape the only way i want them to be able to close it is by by logging in okay so if i go back to my page i load it i can't do anything that's good um let's make a few changes to our app so the current cells the task list that we're searching for i only want them want to be able to search lists that created by equals to the current user the same goes for tasks i'm not going to do this now though because you also need a way to add tasks i just realized um, and a way to add task lists I'm just going to do this quick and dirty. Um, you know, feel free to do this in pop-ups and make it much nicer after. But um, yeah, also you have the the demo link from from Damien, uh, so you can explore the functionality yourself. So obviously, if you have any questions, just pop it on on the Slack channel, so so we can all help you out. Cool. But how it works quick and dirty is I'm going to put an input field here. Yeah. 
Um, okay. And a button, basically, and that would be it. Yes. And a, where is it? We have until seven, right? Yeah. Okay, that's enough. Okay, if this input field, um, we have this button. I'm not gonna make things nice now, or at least not too much. Well, this is not a design workshop. <laughs> so um, input fields and and buttons also hack the workflow. I'm just gonna attach a workflow to the button here. So if this is pressed, I want to create a thing. The thing I wanna create here is a task list, the field name I'm going to set from the inputs that we just put in that page that's called input A. Actually, it's called this, you know, input task list. So going back, the name going to take it from input task lists. No. Uh, input task lists value. So always make sure to specify value, otherwise you get an error. And then I'm going to Reset the inputs. I'm just going to clear out the, uh, the input. So for now, to demonstrate, I'm not going to show the pop-up on login. So I'm just going to delete this for now. Um, cool. By the way, I'm also going to reverse what I've did with my search here, just to show you how you can add data. So we're gonna get rid of this created by current user constraint. I don't know, I don't think we added it here already. Yeah, it's good. So we see all our task lists. I can just go ahead and say task list three edits by the way let's also call it call this add so works like a charm and then i can add um list four and so on we can do exactly the same for tasks i'm going to do this really quick so over here Okay, cool. So I'm gonna select task list one here and I can just add a new task as long as I like. And um, by the way here also, let's not forget to reset the relevant inputs because this is bad UX if things stay there after you edit the thing. Okay, I'll select task list one. Okay, this works. Again, the next thing you want to do is also make it user specific, um, bring the login field back. And then the last thing that will be missing is a way to delete tasks. I'm just gonna show this very, very briefly. It's super simple. I'm just can, for example, copy this icon here, make it the last thing on the page. Let's also use a bin, uh, maybe it's delete, no. It's trash, trash, yeah. Trash. yeah. Cool. Very American. And then at the yeah, and the workflow would here uh, be delete a thing, which again is current sales task. So if I go back here, select task list one, I can just go here and delete all of this random task that I just added. Yeah, I think that's it. Oh, lovely. Uh, I could take I a think... few questions in the yeah. Yeah, I think you've covered, you, you've just 
done a, a crash course on Bubble, like you explained, like the main functionality of the app, how the data especially, especially works. And obviously there's a limit to what we can do in an hour, but I, I think we, we've done great. So uh, really, really grateful, grateful for, for this session, Damien. Pleasure. Yeah, so does anybody- um, I don't know, we're, we're, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I think Bubble is growing a lot and, and the community from Bubble, it's amazing. You, you can learn so much stuff just browsing the forum. Uh, a, few, a, a resource that I just found today on Twitter was uh, Bubble has created some database guidelines uh, written by, by some ex experts. I don't know if you had a chance to see it, Damien, but like basically they have given models to create databases based on the type of app that you're building. Uh, I've shared that on the Look What I Found channel on Slack. So if you are, if you want to take a look, uh, that, that's also that's also useful, I believe. And obviously, we, we plan to do more events uh, of these. Uh, obviously, with, with with folks like like Damien, who who obviously have a lot of bubble game and, and a lot of bubble experience. Also, don't forget to to check. Damien's uh, newsletter. I'll drop it on the message right now. It's Bubble Hacks, and he has some some magics under under his hat. So, uh, yeah, thank thank you everyone for joining. Uh, let it, let me know. Reach out to me if you had any questions or feedback for the session. We obviously want to improve these these workshops as as we grow. And yeah, th thanks for for taking the time for joining. And obviously, thank you, Damien, uh, for for doing this session. Yeah, yes. Pleasure. Thanks yes, so much for yes, the opportunity. Robert. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, there will be a recording. And yeah, have a great evening, all of you, or day, wherever in the world you are. Uh, but yeah, take care. Take care. Thank you so much, Damon. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. See you all around. Bye-bye.